Hey there, fellow maker. It's Ghostbusters month. That's right, we're doing the ecto goggles. Also, I can't see a thing. <laughs> Woo! Yes! We have been working on our Ghostbusters stuff. I've been getting my Ghostbusters suit all spruced up for Halloween and of course the new movie coming out. And we've been super impressed with the offerings they've had at Spirit Halloween. Uh, you'll remember we did the ghost trap. Their ghost trap's really awesome and we figured, let's get the ecto goggles. Let's do a mod on this so it looks super legit from the movie. The look I'm going for is Ghostbusters 1, the original, and these references are a replica that was done by Hollywood Collectibles a while ago. Grabbed a bunch of shots so that I can figure out how to mod all of these parts to look like that. And I started collecting all my materials over the last week or so. I wanna do the lenses in aluminum. I've got all that here. I've got my uh, cloth uh, straps here. Bunch of other parts put together. Did some tests as well, trying to figure it all out. And I came to the conclusion that I was gonna replace nearly everything, the straps, the foam thing on the inside, those lenses, and the body too. So I 3D printed that and we're not gonna do a mod, we're just gonna use this as inspiration and do a full on build. Uh, this is a 3D print I did on my Ultimaker, um, 0.2 millimeter layer height ABS plastic because it sands better. Uh, and this was a file I found on Thingiverse, user not Sabat put it out and it looks really fantastic. This is gonna do well for us, I think. So let's get the super tedious and boring part out of the way and sand this thing, starting with some card scrapers. Our buddy Ben, who we talked to a couple weeks ago, referenced these in a video. It's usually used for woodworking, but it does a great job of knocking down the high spots on your 3D print. We'll start with that. We'll get some sandpaper, a bunch of elbow grease, and make this thing look really nice. Well, that's a good noise. I think some people won't like that noise. This might have to just be a montage. <laughs> I have done a bunch of sanding, I'm not done yet. This is just 100 grit. Uh, but I've also made some slight alterations to the 3D print. I've added some gussets here. This is just epoxy sculpt, and once it hardened, I could sculpt it a little bit more. This is to make it look more like it was vacuum formed over something. The uh, 3D files I downloaded had a hard edge there, and a, a vacuum form wouldn't have that. So that's what that's for. Uh, and then the other changes I wanna make are the locations of many of these holes. So going off of my Hollywood replicas reference here, I can see that uh, there should be another hole here. And maybe this one needs to move, be moved back a little bit. Uh, I also think that the uh, snaps that attach the strap up here should be a little higher and a little further back. Uh, and on the bottom, looks like there are two each on either side of the snaps and while there's only one hole here. I need to delete that one and add two more. And I think to get rid of these holes, I wanna grab a little more ABS filament and heat it up and sort of melt it in there and then sand it flush. So let's give that a try and see if it works. So I've got some more ABS filament to match what I printed with and I'm just sort of heating it and mashing it in there. I'll do this to put seams together too. Uh, I've got a fan going, so I'm not inhaling all these ABS fumes, very important. And also, I could have made these changes in the 3D model before I printed it. I could have done that had I thought to do that at the time. And uh, after doing all this sanding, I think that would have been great if I'd remembered, but here we are. Let's cut through that. Making sure I heat up the plastic around it too so that it all melts together. That looks pretty good. One down, like nine or 10 to go. You could fill these with a whole bunch of different stuff, like some more of this epoxy putty. I do love this method though, because it's super fast. This literally cooled in like a minute, and then I can just sand it flush 
Uh, I love working with ABS and printing in ABS because it sands so nicely. Oh yeah, that worked great and it was really quick too. Uh, now, I need to do some layout, do a little bit here, uh, figure out where this hole ought to go. And I can take measurements with this little uh, square thingy, <laughs> I forgot what it's called, and uh, draw them on there. It's about right there. Tighten that down. Let me bring this up there. There's where that goes, and halfway up is about right there. That's where I'll drill the new hole, and I've got the rest of them laid out as well. Uh, and I'm not going to use a normal twist drill bit. I'm worried that it'll twist in and split apart the layers. I've had that happen on the 3D print. I'm going to use the rotary tool. I've got this pointy cutting bit in, uh, in my rotary tool here, uh, and this should almost just melt a hole through the plastic, and hopefully it won't uh, splinter apart the 3D print. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Better than expected. I uh, ended up widening these a little bit so that these will actually fit. These are the snaps I'm gonna use. So uh, for the bottom part here, it's this part of the snap. It will be facing outward like that. And then for these guys, it looks like it's this part of the snap. And that'll probably just get glued there, I think, um, after I paint this. Um, and I'll probably put a, the post, cut the post off and glue that in there so it looks like it's been snapped, but I can't actually clamp that part because there's just too much, too much material in the way. If this had been vacuum formed, it would be a thin shell that you could just actually really snap these on or, or crimp them on the way you would do it for real. I've got, uh, I got it sanded at 200 grit. I added a couple more holes for knobs uh, and then I'm gonna hang it for the priming. Like that. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, so I'm gonna just hose it down with tons of primer. Hopefully that'll fill in some of what's left of any of the, oops, that's a bit much. It's gonna get sanded again, that's fine. <laughs> just wanna fill in any little scratches or indents or layer lines that are left on the thing. Goggles are dry. I do have to sand this a bit more, but Kind of sick of that, so let's play with the lathe. Let's make some knobs. I'm gonna start by doing the two knobs on either side. I'm gonna use this aluminum here. It's just about the right diameter. A little small, but I think it'll work fine. I'm gonna get to use one of my favorite tools, the knurling tool. This is a straight knurl. I'm gonna put a bunch of knurls along the length of this, and then I'll cut off my knobs as needed. Yeah, that's looking great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> There's nothing that makes me more satisfied than a good knurl. Uh, okay, now we're gonna face this. I wanna drill a hole in it so I can screw it in from the other side uh, and then slice off some knobs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the idea is a screw comes in from the back and that threaded hole, oh, it just barely catches. Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> that looks so good. Time for this funky knob right here. Uh, I've made some rough guesses at the dimensions here. I think it'll look really good. Let's turn. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Ooh. 
This is the next knob there, and it's a lot wider than the stock material I have. So instead, I'm gonna use this piece of aluminum in the jaws here as an arbor. And since this has a hole through it, I can just use a screw to attach it. And the piece I'm gonna start with is this flat piece that I've just cut into a circle and drilled a hole through so that I can do this and attach it. And then I just need to turn it down to shape, knurl it, and add a chamfer. After just a tiny bit of cleanup work, the knobs are done and they look extraordinary. <laughs> These are the most legit things I've ever made and they totally fit on the goggles. I got the appropriate screws for these. While no one was looking, I wet sanded the uh, goggles to 400 grit and uh, primed them again. So the goggles are ready for paint. And then these parts just screw right on like that. Uh, but we're gonna set those aside for now and work on the face plate that goes in there that will hold the lenses. Here's what we're talking about. This plate on the front here, there's actually another one behind it and I'm gonna do both of those. And I've done a little bit of layout already. I did all this infusion, drew up my uh, dimensions and all that. I'm gonna cut these two plates out of a piece of 1 8 inch Sintra. This is a foam PVC. And to stick this down, I have this stuff here, this is a temporary adhesive. It kind of makes whatever you spray it on like the sticky part of a post-it note. So let that dry a little bit and then we can stick it down. Very nice. Uh, I can cut all this out, but I think what I want to do first is drill all these little holes and then I'll cut it out. To the drill press. Oops. We'll just... Get all of these started so that we don't miss. These interior big old holes, you can do them on this scroll saw here. <laughs> Be free to clean up. My work here, make these circles perfect. Gonna use the oscillating spindle sander. Of course, you could just use a rotary tool, but if you have it, use it. Now we will put the bigger spindle on. Time! <laughs> the exterior cuts can be done with a knife. Uh, it's soft enough that a normal knife will totally do the trick. Remove a little bit of that. We'll finish that on the sander. Yeah. Moment of truth. It is snug. I'll just sand the edges, but that looks really, really, oh, it's like perfectly snug. Mm. Inside, same thing. Wow, nailed it.
<laughs> that feels really good. Okay. Let's uh, move on to the next step. Peel this, hopefully it peels right off. If you're wondering, those plastic pieces, Bill, why didn't you just 3D print them? Oh, look at that. I could have 3D printed this, but here's the thing. This was really fast, minutes, right? Also, I kind of feel dirty 3D printing something that's essentially a two-dimensional object. Uh, and besides, that spindle sander was lonely. Hasn't been used in a while. Uh, what I'll want to do now is get them to this state. So I'll sand them, prime them, and get them ready to go. And then we can make the lenses. While that primer is drying, I'm gonna go get a little more practice on the lathe turning the two lens casings. Each one actually has three parts. There's this main sort of body part. There's a bezel that goes around it. That's what this is for. Uh, and then there's gonna be a tiny retaining ring in the front of each one to hold the lens, which will just be a piece of acrylic plastic. Uh, I've got a plan. Kind of hard to decipher here, but trust me, all of my instructions are included right here so I can figure it out. So let's chuck up some aluminum and make some chips. Lathe montage. Lathe montage. Lathe montage. That was a whole bunch of work standing in front of that lathe. It's a very small, very used lathe, but it totally did the trick. And now we need to figure out how we're gonna attach this to this. Well, I figured it out. I just need to drill some holes in it, really. We have the back plate, the front plate. We have these bezels that go in there, and then these go in there. There will be plastic lenses in there. I haven't cut those yet, but to hold them in place, I cut these little retaining rings, one for that and one for that. This ring will go over there, but only a part of it. There's this lump on the original that I'm trying to replicate. So this will, the inner diameter matches. I'll probably end up gluing it there, uh, but we've got to slice that up. Uh, but first, whoop, we need to drill the same holes that I have here in the back of here. And it's not quite centered, or it's not the same diameter, so I think I'm gonna wrap tape around this until it is. I'm sure this is exactly how ClickSpring would do it. We'll just get it so that it's close and then I can um, center punch those and drill them. Okay, those are nice and snug. I took this drill bit that I do not care about, it's the right size, and I uh, sharpened the end of it there and I figure if I put it in there that'll keep it centered and then if I whack it with a hammer, it'll leave us a nice center mark. Then we do that all the way around. We'll know where those holes are meant to go. There it is, perfect. We can drill those at the drill press. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> so we can get that out of there. Should have been using cutting oil, that's on me. Um, I, what I can do is rotate this and put my holes in a different spot, <laughs> which I'm gonna have to do because that's not coming out. Put some cutting oil on, there we go. Cool. Much better. Time to tap. This is my only M3 tap, which are the screws I'm using, um, which is power drill operated. So I'm just gonna be really careful. It's aluminum though, it shouldn't be a big deal. Of course, I am thinking about the one that I just, the drill bit I just broke, it should be fine. That'll do it. Time to do the first test assembly here. Make sure all of this work worked. Let's see, that goes like that, yeah. That eye goes, this eye goes over here. And it goes through there. Oh yeah. It's terribly satisfying. I love putting stuff together with screws. I can take it apart later. I'm gonna have to take it apart later so I can paint it. <laughs> uh, and then this goes over that very snugly, like a glove. And then these screws go through there. Although I think I need to drill those a little bigger, but those will go through there. <gasps> this was so much work, <laughs> but it looks amazing. <laughs> and I can see, I can see you. Hello. <sighs> Okay, we have a couple more pieces to make out of metal. Here's what I'm thinking for this lump here. Um, I have the ring that I cut and I'm just gonna go to the bandsaw and cut that and I'll sand the top of it a little bit flatter too. And I have a couple tries. <laughs> I'm sanding this, but I want to keep the uh, the sand lines in the, in the right direction. It looks like brushed metal. Looks so good. So this will go right on there. We're just gonna glue it with JB Weld. Shouldn't need a lot. That should be plenty. Okay, let's go. Let's give it the clamps. Good thing I have these tiny adorable clamps. They're so cute. And we're good. A little bit of squeeze out. We can wipe that off. Good enough for me. <laughs> I think that looks way cool. That can cure. Takes like five, 10 minutes and uh, we can go make some knobs. Ta-da, three tiny knobs. I think I'm done with the lathe for this project. Very happy with how these turned out. Now, you can see this is stuck in place perfectly and we can drill some holes and tap them for these fellas. The aluminum is so soft, nice and easy to tap. Says the guy who just broke a <laughs> drill bit in a, <laughs> in a piece of aluminum. And there we go. Oh, it looks so cool. Knobs are all completed. Time to focus on these slides here. These were made uh, out of just a thin piece of sheet metal and I used a drill press to poke some holes in it and then the scroll saw to cut out the inside parts. Little harrowing on the scroll saw. A uh, rotary tool is probably a safer bet. Uh, but they turned out okay after a little bit of hand filing to really finesse them. Uh, and then I've got this little uh, slide part, another just uh, whoop, thin piece of that sheet metal that's gonna go over there and just bend over like so. And we've got our slides. There are three of them, uh, one on either side and then one on the top. 
I like how these turn out. Um, they have a sort of hand-hewn quality to them. I think I will check next time I'm at the Army Navy store in Seattle and see if I can find some real ones. And I'll buy them and swap them out. But for now, these are plenty good. All the parts are ready for paint. Finally, I can start masking. I've added uh, a couple of rings. These go on the inside of the goggles. That's just some styrene I glued down. And then these are all the snaps that'll get attached. Uh, they've been scuffed up a little bit and I'm gonna paint them black so that I can chip them a little bit so that they have some wear and tear later. This is the only bit of masking I need to do. Everything else is just gonna get covered. Got my airbrush loaded with this flat black and that's gonna go on all these parts here. I am mixing up my own green here. This is, uh, these are thicker paints here, so I'm thinning them with their airbrush medium. So it'll run through my airbrush. Oh, it's nice. Probably need a couple of coats. All the painting is done, looks great. I ended up giving the green parts a clear coat, this uh, matte finish I really like. Uh, I also can demask. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. <laughs> that looks so good. And we've got stickers. Um, I found this on Amazon, it's a sort of a foil, a shiny foil paper that you can print in a laser printer. So we printed these out. These are um, stickers I found on DeviantArt. I'll have a link down below to the artist that made them so you can grab them yourself if you're making some goggles. Next is just to cut these out, slap them on my goggles. Why'd you print it out in landscape mode? I swear, I swear that I told Photoshop to print it in portrait and it still did it this way. You can, you can decide to believe me or not. <laughs> Good news is we have plenty extra to work with. If you're gonna do this kind of work, a pair of these little scrapbooking scissors are so useful and so worth it. I found this works, it leaves a better edge anyway than trying to do it with an X-Acto knife. Uh, sticker goes right there, but uh, before I do that, I wanna install this screw. I happen to have a tiny little screw here. I can scuff it up a little too. I want it to be kind of weathered. Yeah. It's time. Oh yeah. I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm like wicked good at putting stickers on Legos. Yes. All right, I got my reference picture I'm looking at over there to make sure everything is in the right spot. Oops, it's a little, well, let's just see how it goes. A little crinkly, but that's just how that's gonna be. Oh, how good does that look? The shine coming through on the text makes me very happy. Oh, that makes it look so legit. <laughs> I've been like this all week. <laughs> Bam. Man, this is exciting. Next is kind of a harrowing step. I want to start weathering all of these things, but I want to like physically weather the metal parts. I want them to get dinged up a bit. I want the paint to scratch. And to do it, I have a bucket, I have some chunks of metal and some screws, and I'm gonna give them a little tumble. I'm sure it'll go fine. Worst case scenario, I may have to repaint some things, but this is the super legit way to get a real finish. In we go. Next, you wanna add screws to the mix. Make sure it's thoroughly integrated, and then bake for half an hour. All right, here we go. Ugh. This hurts a little bit. <laughs> that worked pretty well. Um, 
especially like the edges of the lenses here. Those are gonna get dinged and knocked on stuff. I think that's as much of the screws and hunks of metal uh, as I wanna do, but I can go in with my Scotch Brite and just do a little more specific work here. To... I wanna make sure we can see all the knurls there. Yeah, and give it more of a worn look, like it's just been rubbing against something. Sticker got a little goofed up, that's great. This is like easy mode, just scuffing it. You just pretend like this is what happened to it in the real world. And it looks so good. Oh yeah, that's a very good bake. No soggy bottoms here. I uh, cut out the lenses. This is a 1 8 inch thick acrylic. I cut it on the laser because cutting circles out by hand is a pain in the butt. Oh, there we go. That goes in there. That goes in there. There we go. <laughs> and then this ring will get glued in there. Same with the other one. Uh, I'll get it ready and then we'll mix up some epoxy. This is a super fast set epoxy because I'm impatient. I need just the tiniest amount. And I'm using this little makeup brush to apply it. It's hard to mix a tiny amount though. I mix way more than I needed. That's okay. I don't want to use super glue for this. Super glue likes to make acrylic plastic craze and haze up. So that's why we're going with this epoxy. Just a little more around the edge for the ring that's going to hold it in place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And this guy. Mmm, that's wonderful. I love the black ring in there, the contrast. That looks awesome. Okay, we can breathe. The inner lenses here are tight enough. I can just press them in place. I don't think those are ever gonna come out. Yeah, oh, that's really snug. All right, I wanna glue these together. They're gonna get screwed together, but I also want it glued. The screws will provide registration too, making it really easy to line them up. There we go, all lined up. I'm just vibrating with excitement. Putting this thing together is getting so good. Oh yeah, yes. Gotta scuff up all my screws. Double checking everything that I'm putting the right pieces in the right spot. That goes in there, uh, which means this will go like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Trying to add the snaps. These aren't going to be functional at all, so I'm gluing them. I'm worried that if I whack it with a hammer and try and mushroom the other end and do it the way it's meant to do it, that I will crush my 3D print. Uh oh. There we go. So these are just getting glued. There we go. Sticking out the back. I can try and sand those down later, but also um, this is all going to be covered by foam. Another sort of decorative uh, snap here. Next set of snaps are gonna be functional. They're gonna be really, really holding stuff on. Um, so I'm going to use the two sides like you normally would for real. But instead of whacking it with a hammer, I'm gonna use my press. I think it's gonna be a little gentler and hopefully it doesn't crack the 3D print. That's, that's my concern here. Let's stop when we hear cracking. <laughs> Whoops. Oh yeah, that is good. Put some more decorative screws. Click. Now we add the knobs. That's the wrong screw. Now we add the knobs. <laughs> Ooh yeah. Let me get a Allen wrench for that. Nope, too big. I tell you, I am loving our setup here in the uh, new basement shop. Got my battle station with all my tools in arm's reach. It feels great. <laughs> that's, that's looking amazing. Almost forgot these little knobs. Yes. Oh man. 
Should we glue? We should glue this in now. I think we're ready. More of this quick set epoxy. I'm gonna use a little super glue. I noticed this part didn't want to stay down, so I'll tack that down with super glue before uh, before we clamp all of this together. There, it's holding. All right. This handsome fella here helped us out. I'm doing this thing, this uh, back of the head strappy looking thing here, and I just did a quick pattern out of tape. This will hopefully lay flat for us. And then of course I only did half of it because I'm gonna mirror that. There we go, we got it mostly to lay flat. Um, I went and uh, put this on half of a page there so that I can now cut that out and it, it'll be symmetrical. Ta-da! It's a beard. Hey. That's terrifying. <laughs> I grabbed some wax canvas for this back of the head thingy here. Um, this looks like it's some kind of vinyl, but this will do, and I will use this again in the future. Uh, and you can't buy only a little bit of it, so uh, I'll be happy with this material for sure. That's it. That's all we needed. There we go. That looks good. Uh, this stuff, I don't think it'll fray, so I think we're pretty much set there. I'm just so using every technique I know in this. <laughs> build. I wasn't expecting that. This is a uh, canvas webbing here. Just going to do a little boxy box right there. All right. More rectangular than square, but that's okay. I'm going to add straps to my custom made slides here. This is how Yaya finishes all of her seams. <laughs> Gotta add some functional snaps here. So we're gonna punch a hole first. Oh, that's a good sound. Uh, that goes in there. This goes like that. There we go. And then we smash it with a hammer. There it goes. Oh, and I gotta try. Oh, didn't snap. Let's get a better snapping sound. There it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. Making a quick pattern here. There's a bit of foam on the inside of the goggles. So I'm just tracing the back of the goggles here, and that's what I'll use. Got some upholstery foam here. That'll work nicely. Keep my face nice and comfy against that hard plastic. Oh, this fancy knife? I'm glad you asked. I got this at punishprops.com. Oh, we sell knives and our foam smith books over there. In fact, the holidays are coming up. We'll probably have a sale soon. So you wanna head over there and grab a book for yourself or a friend. The gift of knowledge is always a thoughtful gift. So this will go in there. You just need to cover it. I've got the perfect stuff right here, this thin faux leather vinyl. Won't be sewing this stuff. I will be hot gluing it. <laughs> Much better with hot glue than I am with a sewing machine. Got it all lined up and I'm gonna hot glue it down first in place so that it won't go anywhere. Yes. 
There we go. And now we wrap it like a poorly wrapped present. Going off the reference that I have, and it looks like they did it pretty much the same way. It looks a little bit wrinkly and puckered, but from the front, I can live with that. So this goes in there. It looks pretty okay from the front. <laughs> um, I didn't want to try and use snaps uh, because I don't think I could make that work. Hot glue it is. Let's see how it feels. Oh yeah, super comfortable. I can even see you. Hello. All right, so we've got our straps ready to go. We just have to get them fitted to my head. So we'll put this on my uh, stone head and do that. That goes in like that. And then back through. It even works. Of course it works. Okay. We can tighten this quite a bit. Okay. Oh, pretty good. It's still a little bit of tweaking with the fit, but that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, a little tighter on the sides, I think. Now that my, uh, Straps, I cut them to length here. No, it'll fit on me. We can finish these edges. I'm gonna fold this and stitch it so that it can't get pulled back through. Straps are all done. They look really good and they go on like this. I love using these real snaps. Feels so great. Oh, how legit does that look? Well, it almost, almost looks super legit. These straps are far too clean. The body of this is far too clean. You know what that means. Weathering. Time for weathering. <laughs> I am super pleased with how dirty this looks and I'm gonna do one wacky thing. Very selectively, add a little bit of watered down nuclear neon green. Uh, this came to us from Plaid. I'm gonna water it down and add a little slime. Just a couple little spots, just a hint. You may not even see them. Going for subtle here. Like when this dries, you may not even really see it all that much but I want it to feel like maybe I got slimed and then I cleaned it off. So just the tiniest bit in there. And I'll splash some here and there, but again, not a lot. I don't want it to, this to, I don't want you to like your eye to go straight to that, right? When you see it, I just want to maybe notice it uh, if you're looking close. Oh, I got slimed. Now I gotta clean off my damn goggles. Putting it all together, getting excited. <laughs> oh man, that looks so legit. The straps look so nice. Everything looks really dirty and just the right way. Of course, I've got to put it on. Yeah, oh, got to tighten it a little bit. This is awesome. This is a perfect addition to my Ghostbusters costume. In fact, Halloween has both come and went and I wore my Ghostbusters outfit for Halloween. And now next year, 
I'll have some ecto goggles. Thank you so much for watching. This was really satisfying. I went kind of off the rails with all the techniques and I feel, I feel like I did a pretty great job. I'm so satisfied. Uh, thanks for watching again. Thank you to the Extra Credit Club. Uh, we do vlogs and behind the scenes projects with them every single week. So if you wanna join, link down below. You can join on Patreon or right here on YouTube. Thanks again for watching. Remember, who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! He-Man! <laughs>